Prairie Yard and Garden is a production of the University of Minnesota Morris in cooperation with Pioneer Public Television. Funding for Prairie Yard and Garden is provided in part by Heartland Motor Company, providing service for over 30 years in the heart of truck country. Heartland Motor Company, we have your best interest at heart. Farmers Mutual Telephone Company and Federated Telephone Cooperative, proud to be powering ASIRA. Mark and Margaret Yako Jolene, in honor of Shalom Hill Farm, a nonprofit rural education retreat center in a beautiful prairie setting near Wyndham in southwestern Minnesota. ShalomHill.org. Several years ago, both of my parents were dealing with cancer. If you've had cancer in the family, you know there are lots of doctor and care visits, so I was on the road quite often traveling back and forth to my parents' home. When going through Donnelly, Minnesota, I could always see a yard about a block off Main Street that just fascinated me and beckoned for a visit. I'm Mary Holm, and join me on Prairie Yard and Garden as we finally get a chance to visit that special yard. Donnelly, Minnesota is a nice community in the west central part of the state that is well known for its annual threshing bee. Towards the end of August, people come from miles around to enjoy old tractors and equipment being used and exhibited. One yard probably gets a lot of visits during this time because of all the tractors, equipment, antiques and floral plant displays. Today, we get to see the old made new in Kathy Eistead's yard. Welcome, Kathy. Well, welcome, Mary. I want to welcome you to our yard here. Jamie, my husband, and myself have been working hard to get it ready for your visit. How long have you been gardening, or how did you get started interested in gardening? Well, I can't remember when. I've been gardening all my life. It was just part of growing up. We had a vegetable garden and flowers and house plants. And then after I was married and we had our own place here, I wanted to have flower gardens and a vegetable garden. And I remember my husband saying, I'll dig up a plot for you to have a vegetable garden, but don't expect me to help with it. <laughs> well, that's changed over the years. And every night he comes home, he hoes a little bit. He comes in with his cap full of tomatoes or carrots for his lunch or whatever. So I think he enjoys it as much as I do. So your family actually does help in the yard then? Well, they, they do. And this year, I'm excited because my grandson has been helping us mow, and it frees me up a couple hours a week to do other things. And then our younger grandson, he likes to come and help pull weeds and garden okay. in the vegetable garden. And you said your family likes to help too. Now, do they sometimes help with building things for your yard too? Yes, they do. Um, my son, Zachary, he's very talented in building um, sheds and I have an arbor that he's built, bird houses. He's been doing that since he was a little boy. And our other son, Cody, he enjoys landscaping and gar vegetable gardening. So he used to always plant the garden when he was home. So I do miss him moving away from home. And then our older son, he, uh, he and his children, the grandchildren, they like to come and vegetable garden. Okay, so you can kind of share the produce with the family there I do. too. I okay. do. Now you had mentioned um, we are standing on a beautiful stone pathway. Was that built by family members? It was. Last year my brother-in-law Robert, that's my husband's brother, he built this path for us. He collected all the rocks. I helped, but he did most of the work and I really, really appreciate all of it. It's not easy to locate the rocks and then load them onto a trailer and bring them in and place, put them in place. But he's extremely talented, so if you ever look at the rocks, you'll notice he loves to put cross or, um, jigsaw puzzles together. 
And the placement of every rock is like a puzzle piece. As you can see here, a lot of these um, things that we have in our yard that we enjoy are ag related. They come from the farm. And my husband and I, we both grew up here in rural Minnesota. He grew up by south of Morris and I was here by Donley. And we, the family farm is important to us. And it's sad to see some of these farm sites that are going by the wayside. Um, we like to keep up some of the memories. So we have things such as this cupola from his grandfather's farm near Reckway Cemetery over by Alberta. And this, I have some sheds here. This shed was built by my son, Zachary, from wood that my mother got from the farm where she grew up, from the barn. And that pasture of that farm is now part of Glacial Park by Starbuck. Um, my husband has been going to auctions and he enjoys doing that. And as you can see, we have a lot of pieces that he's picked up. Um, one auction that he attended, he came home with a pickup load of grindstones. He wanted one and he came home with 10 or 12. So that's part of, you know, finding places for them to be in our yard. Um, and we have like our shed here. It's a garden shed today, but Years ago, I wanted something for my sons to have to play in and around. So we had a sandbox for their Tonka toys, and then we, I moved this shed in from a local farm just outside of Donnelly. It was a feed shed, and then it was a clubhouse, and now it is my garden shed. Um, it's, they spent many hours out there. And I bet it was nice because you could keep an eye on them and then they were still outside playing. Right, yes. I could peek out the window when I was making supper and I could keep an eye on them and they really enjoyed it. Well, you have incorporated so many things. I even know some of the um, containers that you use for your flower pots look like they are um, antique things or things that may have come from the farm. They have. Um, some of them, this big kettle over here or hog pot I'm not sure what they call them my dad bought for me at an auction and we use a lot of galvanized containers they're kind of fun the wash tubs and um, on that on this wagon over here you'll notice my son built the wagon from wheels that we had and old lumber but I've put a wash tubs and then there's an old chicken feeder or feeder behind it well and it looks like uh, things are the older things are very important to you and your family and I noticed that you also had a wagon and some other machinery out on the other side of your building. Mm -hmm. Would it be possible to go and take a look at some of those things? Certainly. Let's go take a look. These tractors are part of the collection and the fascination uh, for your yard that I saw when I would be going by. How did you get such a collection? Well it started off with one tractor and now we have four. Um, the Oliver on the end was a tractor that my dad purchased at an auction sale because it was like a tractor that he grew up with. And as you can see, it has steel wheels and the, the rear wheels are steel and they are called tiptoe wheels. And when he had an auction and was selling out some of his equipment, my son Zachary wanted the tiptoe tractor. So we have the tiptoe tractor. And then the Ford and the farm all here were tractors that my dad was fixing up before he passed away. So that's how we got those two tractors. And then my husband had purchased, he purchased a John Deere and then he ended up selling it or trading for this one and then he had it repainted. And this year at the Donnelly Thrashing Bee, they're featuring John Deere. So hopefully we can get the B John Deere and the plow out to the thrashing bee grounds so others can enjoy it. Another thing that I saw when I would go by is the beautiful color over on the corner. Could we look at the flowers out there? Sure, let's take a look. Well Mary, this is a rain garden that we put in about five years ago. Um, it really has taken off well. We, we had a rain garden at our lake over by um, on Red Rock by Hoffman, Minnesota, and it certainly does its job, and we were very happy with it. And we decided with the slope here and mowing, and there was always water standing here, that we would put in a rain garden. And Mary, as you can see, I maybe would have did a little better job with placement of some of the plants, because I've got some tall and short. 
However, then they reseed themselves and they come where they want to anyways, so maybe it doesn't really matter. It's all nature and they're all native to this area. With the slope, you said that this was a place that caught water and there'd be water standing here? Yes. Was that a place then that you had to worry about mosquitoes and stuff too? Yes, and it was also difficult to mow because it would hold the water. And this has just been really nice to, um, nice addition to our yard. We also planted a rain garden on the other end of our yard. Same conditions, you know, the slope and the water would stand in that area also. And that probably has taken care of all of that then? It has. And native flowers are easy. Okay. You don't really have much maintenance. Um, and as they grow, they choke out a lot of the weeds. And so it's, it's a win-win situation. Well, even just in the few minutes that we've been standing here, I've noticed that you've had some butterflies coming here too. So it's probably great for the butterflies and the pollinators. Yes, if you look at these yellow, the cone flowers, you can just see the pollinators. They're just hovering around, they're landing on all of them. It's, it's really amazing. It's a great habitat for the pollinators and the butterflies, and I think maybe a snake once in a while, or a toad <laughs> or a frog also. I hope no skunks. <laughs> I saw a toad go hopping away a while ago, so I can, I can understand exactly what you said. And I'll bet you this is great for the monarchs too. Yes. There are many monarchs when it, you know, when it's their time, you can just, they're, they're everywhere. It's beautiful. Well, the, this is so pretty here. And then I noticed um, that you also have a wagon with some other sunflower or sun loving plants in it too. Could we see that? Yes. The wagon my husband built for me. Okay. And the flowers, you'll notice, um, I have the best luck with the bubblegum supertunias. Okay. And they're not as large as they normally are. They can have up to a two foot mound and they can overhang three feet or more over the container. Wow. So other years it's been fuller than this. Do you think that's because it hasn't been quite as sunny and warm this year? We've I'm had wondering. a lot of rain. I'm wondering if that's the case. Okay. There's, and they're, they bloom all season. Okay. And there's a little, very little deadheading that you have to do with those. Okay. So it's an easy plant, and it looks like you work hard at it. <laughs> <laughs> well, it sounds like your husband is very good at building things. Um, as you look over here, Mary, you'll see this steam engine that my husband built last winter out of bits and pieces of equipment that he's picked up here and there. Um, it brings back some childhood memories for him because when he was a small boy, he would visit his grandma in town here, and the neighbor gentleman, um, he had a steam engine in his yard, and so they would play on it. And of course, with Dolly Thrash and Bee, you know, it's kind of part of our history here too. So he collected all of the iron, if you want to call it that, and came up with this creation last winter. You've got the funniest looking driver over uh, with your flowers and by the wagon. Tell me about that. Yes, I call him the pot man. And my son was traveling for work and went through a small town and up north about an hour away and he was going by this nursery and he saw these men or people made of clay pots. He, he t took a picture and sent it to me and the rest is history. Oh, it's really pretty how you've done that and you've got so many unusual containers in your yard. Could we go and see more? Sure, let's go check it out. I have a question. I would like to grow blueberries in west central Minnesota. What are the challenges I will face? Well, one thing you don't need to worry about is having hardy varieties. The University of Minnesota has developed nine hybrids. They're, they're crosses between the, the native wild blueberry that grows in northern Minnesota and the highbush blueberry that's grown around the country. The biggest challenge in growing them is the soil pH. And so we're growing them here in Carver County by adding large quantities of sphagnum peat. It has to say sphagnum peat, not because some types of peat are not sphagnum. 50%, build a big mounded bed that's 50% sphagnum peat, and also add large quantities of 95% sulfur that you can buy from a garden center, or a lot of times the farm stores will sell 95% sulfur. Use a organic mulch, uh, sawdust, wood bark, something like that, and then give them acid fertilizer several times a year, uh, like a mere acid type product. Uh, if you do all of those things, uh, you can have good success with blueberries. And they're, they're nice landscape plants. They have beautiful glossy green foliage in the summer. 
beautiful maroon color in the fall and great tasting berries. We had a trouble this year that wild turkeys ate most of our fruit, but that hasn't happened in the past. Ask the Arboretum Experts has been brought to you by the Minnesota Landscape Arboretum in Chanhassen, dedicated to enriching lives through the appreciation and knowledge of plants. I noticed that you have some uh, blue bottles in your yard. What is that feature? Well, let me tell you about it. The, my sister-in-law gave those to me as gifts. They're called bottle trees. And so you um, collect wine bottles. You can either get them from friends, or I guess you can have a bottle of wine now and then, and add to your tree. And it's a nice feature for the yard, something different. Do you take those in in the wintertime? No, actually, I leave them out all year. The bottles hold up fine, and against the white snow, it looks really pretty in the winter. Do they not ever blow off with all the wind that we get? No, they don't. I bet they would be really pretty and they would add some color instead of just having our plain white winters. Mm -hmm. And you have options too with that, Mary. You can add different colored bottles and make it a green Christmas tree, or you could have a gold bottle on the top for your star, or you know, there's a lot of different things you can do. We've looked for red wine bottles and that they're hard to find. But whatever your favorite color is, you can probably find a bottle to, mm -hmm. to build your own we tree. We think the blue is pretty, so that's what we went with. Another feature that I really enjoyed looking at here in your yard is this pond. It's beautiful. Did you guys build this? Actually, my brother-in-law, Robert, who put in the rock pathways, put in the pond for me last summer. This summer, our Missy, our golden retriever, has enjoyed it immensely. She swims all the time, and she's also chasing after the goldfish that I have in there. How do you keep this clean, or how do you keep the pump? I assume there's a pump that recirculates the water. There is a pump. Um, it's not very much maintenance that I've found. Maybe I'm doing it incorrectly, not sure. But um, you're supposed to have plants in your pond also, and I believe there's a certain percentage that of the water that should be covered. And I've tried that, and last year I was successful, and this year with Missy, my dog, I have been unsuccessful with keeping enough plants. But also in the shade is better than in the sun. Then what do you do in the fall and in the winter with this? Well, we'll drain the pond, okay. and I will have to find someone with a large fishbowl. Okay, so you've got to get your fish and keep them over the winter yes. too. Okay, how early in the season do you fill this? Uh, after there's no threat of frost, I would, you know, hard frost, I would fill it. Okay, and then did you get a liner that was already in that shape, or did you buy yeah. this as a kit, or how did you um, uh, put this together? Um, my sister-in-law had a liner that she was not going to use, so she gave it to me, and my brother-in-law built up to it. We s put sand, and then we set it on the ground, and then we brought in soil and built up as opposed to digging down in the ground. So that gave us more height. And then did she have that part there too that the water uh -huh. actually runs down into it? Um, that was my brother-in-law's suggestion. He had put in a couple other ponds for family members and he suggested we get the waterfall. And it's just nice water feature listening to it. You know, soft dripping water in the background when you're outside. It's, it's relaxing. You bet. And then you've added the lights too, which um, I'm sure make it very beautiful in the evenings too. It's very nice at night. It is still, again, another struggle with having a dog and um, her visiting the pond many times. She adjusts the lights for me. <laughs> I assume that that is, a, yep, a dog will do that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then did you just plant these hostas in here this year too? Um, some of the larger ones have been here for a while and I'm attempting to plant hostas, but again with my dog, she's helped me dig them out as fast as I've planted them. <laughs> have you been using miniature hostas or yes. are they? Those are small um, miniature hostas around the top. I didn't want them to get too large so I could still see some of the rocks and then there's a mixed match of hostas. I've purchased some. I've gotten some for gifts, and others we've traded with other gardeners to get. And then do you divide some of your own hostas and move them to new locations too? No, I haven't. I have never done that. I want them to get large. Okay. Maybe when they're at a size where I'd feel comfortable 
dividing them I would. And Kathy, you work outside of the home and I think you even have two jobs. How do you find the time to keep up your yard and all of the plants that you have here in your yard? Well, I, when I come home from work, I usually get supper going and then I come out and spend time in the yard. And that is one thing I will attribute to my dog is we enjoy being outside together. So she keeps me outside and I just work every evening a little bit on weeding or watering. And um, I t attended a class that you taught too where you've actually taught a, a couple of classes on fairy gardens mm -hmm. and that's something that it sounds like you really enjoy doing also. I do. Um, fairy gardens are just a miniature garden. So it's a different take on gardening, the traditional gardening. And you can put them in quite interesting containers and a fairy garden has small structures and little accessories and miniature plants and it's just kind of a fun gardening um, avenue to go where you can put them here and there. If you have a large place, you can use them, and if you live in a very small place, you can have a fairy garden. And I think that fairy gardens would be something that you could really enjoy doing with your children or grandchildren, yes. too. Yes, Be a good way to get them started in, in gardening if, uh, if you don't have a lot of space. That's correct, yes. You can use very tiny little, I, I actually have one that's in a cup and saucer a teacup. It's very small. Just a couple little succulents and a little um, bunny. And then you can have, I have a larger one in a wagon. So you can do just about any size. I know that fairy gardens have become very popular over the last number of years, but are they something that are quite new or have they been around fairy gardening? Has that been around for quite a while? It's been around probably for over a hundred years. Really? Yes. How did it get started? Well, it got started at the Chicago World's Fair. There was a bonsai garden dis exhibit at the Japanese Pavilion. And then um, from that, the New York Times wrote an article, and it's been ever history after that. When you do your fairy gardens and when you do your planters outside, mm -hmm. do you use different soil to do both kinds or both things? Um, no, I use potting soil for everything. And what kind of um, plants do you use for your fairy gardens? Uh, typically, I tend to use succulents. They take a little less care. Um, they're not so fussy about lighting. Um, they're a little easier, so they're a little less care, so I can spend time on other flowers and gardens. Um, other, there's uh, many miniature flowers that you can, or plants that you can add to your fairy gardens also. It just seems easier for me with the succulents. And then you can also, you know, propagate, have your own succulents. The leaf drops, it'll grow, you know, it's mm -hmm. just a nice way to handle getting your plants for that and inexpensive. When do you start your plants? The plants that I have out here, I usually purchase. Okay. I don't start them. You mean start planting the mm -hmm. pots? Yep. Well, as soon as you can hit the nurseries and find some good flowers. Okay. And I kind of typically plant, um, I'll take my noon hour and I'll purchase this pot of plants and possibly another one. And then I'll set them in the flat how I want them and I'll bring them home and while I'm supper is cooking I'll come out and plant this planter or plant one other planter. Years ago we'd go buy all these plants for everything and bring them home and it was too overwhelming. This is more manageable and I feel like I actually get something done. That's a good suggestion both for um, the fairy gardens and also for your outside containers too. Now at one of the classes you mentioned fairy dust. What is fairy dust? Fairy dust? It's a little bit of bling for your fairy <laughs> gardens. Anytime you think that you need good luck, you just sprinkle this over the fairy gardens. It's a little bit of glitter that I mix up. Ah, mm -hmm. okay. So that's fun. And then, do you take your fairy gardens in in the wintertime? I do. I bring them to my office at work. It's a little cooler than at home here. And I try to winter them. I've had mostly most success with the succulents um, you still lose a few through the winter and then you just I re redo my fairy gardens about March and then they're ready so I feel like I'm really I've 
accomplished something and I'm ready for spring. Do you have any trouble with transitioning from taking them in and bringing them back out? Um, I, you know, just a little bit of trouble with it. You might lose a plant here or there, but I'm careful in the spring when I bring them out to make sure that the weather is warm enough. And how much light do you give them in the winter time? Do you try to put them on a south side then, or what kind of light conditions? Yes, I have a south and an east window that I try to keep them near. Okay. And that seems to work okay. How did the folklore of fairy gardens get started, actually? Well, there's these mischievous little fairies that like to live in gardens. And they'll live in trees and, and in little structures. Um, and if you provide them with a fairy garden, they will visit the fairy garden, so the story goes. And they're mischievous. So you may find things moved around. And I do find things moved around when I get home from work. But I'm not positive it's the fairies. I believe it's the mischievous Missy my golden retriever. <laughs> and it could but maybe who's be to both. Say, yeah. It could be both. So, yeah. They're maybe recruiting her for their help and moving things around. <laughs> they might. Another um, recommendation if you do have the fairy gardens is that you sit back, relax, and you put your feet up and you watch for the fairies. So you'll get a little relaxation. Oh, yeah. well, that's a good idea and a good suggestion for the yard. It is. Yes. Thank you so much for sharing your beautiful yard with us. And um, I appreciate, oh, one more thing I wanted to ask you about is, I saw that you had a bike that you have incorporated into your yard too. Were those some that your children used growing up? And do you have more than one? I have more than one bike. Um, no, my children did not use these. They're just old bikes that I picked up here and there. And one, as you'll see, I spray painted it's called summer squash or gold. The tires, everything is all spray painted one color. And then in the basket, I have some begonias. So that's a nice place for the fairies to hide is in the bicycle scattered sure, around. And, in, is. and also in the beautiful containers that you have all over the yard too. Thank you again for letting me come to visit after seeing your yard and, and just uh, wanting to visit. Well, come again. Thank you. Funding for Prairie Yard and Garden is provided in part by Heartland Motor Company, providing service for over 30 years in the heart of truck country. Heartland Motor Company, we have your best interest at heart. Farmers Mutual Telephone Company and Federated Telephone Cooperative, proud to be powering a CIRA. Mark and Margaret Yako Jolene, in honor of Shalom Hill Farm, a nonprofit rural education retreat center in a beautiful prairie setting near Wyndham in southwestern Minnesota. ShalomHill.org